Hi there and welcome to the conclusion video of our um, F4J Phantom 1 in 30 second scale made by Tamiya, big whopping expensive kit about £120 and here's a conclusion video just to actually show you this aircraft in the finished um, completed stage and this way I can give you much more information on the actual aircraft because I've actually built it now. Um, to sum it up really the build stage was you know almost flawless I mean it really did go together really really well really really nice no major fit issues with this at all I mean there was maybe one or two little kind of things that you kind of get which you normally get with any kind of kit you know but I mean there was nothing major um, it was I mean I did find that actually there wasn't much seam lines to kind of sort out on the aircraft as well because this whole fuselage section is just one so we didn't have to sort out um, you know your usual seam lines across here you know it really did build together really nice um, the only thing really to note was here in the air intake okay you've basically got it's really weird okay the basically you've got an air intake but then you've got like what looks like an air intake within an air intake and it just looks a bit weird okay um, so if you shine a torch down there and look in there um, you know it just doesn't look that right and it is the one big problem with this actual kit which is a real big shame um, and it's an even bigger shame because I did actually find out that you can actually buy a complete you know seamless air intakes for this um, you know aftermarket parts or you could buy the um, the covers which I wish I knew the air intakes were that bad or I would have gone out and got the seamless um, suckers for that uh, so hopefully you know Please take note, you might want to find these seamless suckers, which I think are a bit rare to get your hands on, or you might want to go for the covers, okay? But apart from that, the build stage was really, really good. I mean, it was a bit annoying, shall I say, to have to do 28 weapons, um, and because it's 30 second scale, you know, you really do need to make sure you get the weapons right and get all those um, seam lines sorted on all your weapons and your bombs and everything. Um, so that was a bit tedious and a little note as well that I didn't show in the um, inbox review was um, Trumpeters 1 in 30 second scale US aircraft weapon set A um, basically all these little uh, Mark 82 bombs I think it is you only get six in the actual kit and I wanted the full 12 okay so I went out and brought this so I could have 12 of these nice mark 82 bombs okay just to beef it up even more you know and fill all these pylons with all the um, weapons you possibly can okay so that was that spray stage I mean we did some nice uh, natural metal finishes here using alclad paints and it really does kind of set it off shall we say really nice at the back here with all this natural metal finish sorry but this thing's huge and a bit hard to kind of maneuver around but you know as you could see you know that just really kind of nicely sets it off which you know that took a bit of time should I say to kind of mask it up and spray it and everything uh, <clears throat> as well as um, we've got our white bits here and here just to kind of um, mask up and everything but I went for a really nice kind of dirty grimy you know uh, aircraft carrier kind of dirty look with this and it's really kind of come out really nice um, just to kind of note what colors I used I used uh, where is it now light gold gray uh, which is XA1137 by extra acrylics and the white I mean I think I used Vallejo but I mean you can use any white for that um, so that was like the spray stage decals um, sadly 
wasn't the best decals. I mean, actually, I mean, read the decals were your typical Japanese style decals. You know, they were really thick. Okay, so you had to be careful if you use um, stuff like washes to do all your recessed panel lines and weather them in. You know, you've got to be careful that you get them stuck down so that the wash doesn't get underneath the decals and make a mess. Um, and you also have to be careful on how much deckling solution that you put down because um, it wrinkled because these decals they do really really wrinkle up really quick really fast and they stay wrinkled for a really really long time so you have to um, kind of trust and be patient in the fact that those wrinkles will eventually go away okay but they take longer to go away than say your normal cartographer decals using micro sol and set okay so you kind of got to trust that they're going to go away and not play around with them because if you play around with them and keep adding decaling, um, decaling solutions and trying to flatten out these wrinkles and stuff what's going to happen is you're going to end up with all these wrinkly creases that that just don't go away so um, be careful with these decals um, with that um, <clears throat> apart from that I mean if you kind of just sort of know what you're doing with the decals they'll be all right but you've got to be careful if you don't they can cause you problems and the aftermarket part the aftermarket decals that we've got to make our um, devils here they were actually really nice and no problems there um, and the finishing, okay, I mean, you know, I've gone for, you know, quite a bit of kind of oil streaks, as you can probably see, okay, um, top and bottom, we've made the engine engine area look really kind of nice and all sort of dirty, streaky kind of going on, and I really do like how that has kind of turned out. I do like, you know, these rubber tyres that you actually get with it as well. Um, they're a nice touch and kind of saves you painting them up as well if you don't like painting up all your your wheels and stuff um, so okay the kit itself is it worth it okay a bit of a conclusion on the kit itself you know I know it's 120 pounds it's a lot of money but I mean this is gonna be probably one of your most impressive um, kits that can go on your display you know one in 30 second scale f4 phantom you know and it's the detail is really really nice and it is just worth the 120 pounds um, and if you do shop around you could probably get it cheaper than 120 pounds as well you know and the amount of weapons you get with it is really cool the pilots are cool you know it is definitely worth it it's easy it goes together pretty easy and you can really just then concentrate on the detail side of it you know um, because you're not maff faffing around doing lots of filling sanding scribing and stuff you can really kind of concentrate on all those details that you can bring out with one in 30 second scale um, so aftermarket parts well we used the Ares cockpit the resin cockpit which was really really good that was worth the money as well um, on the forum in the build section for this actual aircraft you know you can see more detailed with the photos with the actual cockpit out of the aircraft but you know we've gone for um, canopy down so you can't really see um, the resin cockpit that's going on in here um, you can just see it just nicely enough to kind of appreciate it but not as much as if you had canopy open but definitely worth it um, the resin exhausts i mean they look really nice and as i showed you in the uh, inbox in review i mean they are much more better and it's just a bit hard to kind of show you on camera but um with how big it is but um they do look really really nice uh, and especially when you come along and use something like um the mr metal um buffable paints you know they really do kind of um bring them alive nicely so they were worth it um, however um, I did s there's two things actually I mean I went out and I brought the big head set for the F4J 1 in 30 second scale I think it was about 50 pounds and I should have probably put more research into it because you know I did kind of find that I ended up not using a heap load of this stuff okay first off formation lights okay did my research there's no formation lights on these um, 
uh, F4Js, well this particular kind of squadron anyway, so that was um, completely and utterly useless, okay, so that's going to go on eBay. Um, now because I went off and brought all the resin, exhaust and all this kind of stuff, just to kind of, just in case you're going to get all these kind of aftermarket parts, okay, just remember if you're going to get resin cockpit and exhaust, you don't need that that comes with a big headset, you don't need the um, ejection seats green, which is all the seat belts, okay, you don't need the... Um, the cockpit kind of photo etch set, okay, because you get photo etch with the actual resin um, cockpit, and really, okay, I mean, I do t try and teach you how to like make your own masks and everything. Um, really, I mean, if you're building an advanced kit like this, I mean, you've got to have a bit of talent about yourself anyway so you probably know how to do your own masks anyway and all this mask stuff that you get with it I mean you don't actually need it because you can do them yourself and then there was these um, mask etched kind of stencil data sheet which um, although sounds cool in theory um, I didn't want to kind of try it out because I don't know I just didn't um, I didn't like the idea of going off and kind of like trying to position these right onto the model and mask them up on the model and then spray it on the model you know I can do I could have just imagined how you'd kind of maybe slightly not have it in position because what you got to remember is I mean you have this photo etch but you need to put some masking tape around that and you've got to kind of get that in the right exact position and I just thought, felt that it would have been a hell of a lot easier just to stick the, um, the decals down than go for this kind of sprayed on look and really you know if you follow the decaling procedures properly you can get your decals to look sprayed on any well pretty much sprayed on anyway so I didn't bother with that so a heap load of stuff there that I I didn't actually use okay um, the other thing is um, brought these pilots as well aftermarket parts and I ended up not using these as well I mean I really had a good look at it and basically the pilots that you get with a kit with this Tamiya kit um, kind of are just are really actually better than these to be honest with you and these cost about 15 pounds because you've got to get two of them um, so hopefully you know aftermarket parts i've hopefully going to save you a bit of money there because there was quite a heap load of stuff that i didn't end up using so hopefully you don't have to buy them and save yourself some money and as i say the kit is definitely recommended um, it is quite a project i must say as well i mean this isn't something you're going to build overnight okay this isn't something I mean, I think I spent uh, three weeks building this, and you know, I build as a job, as a living. So um, we're talking, you know, seven till five every day, six days a week, you know, and I spent three weeks doing this. So that is how much time you really want to be putting in to a model like this. So, you know, it is no small project. You know, this is a big project. So, you know, coming back to the 120 pounds, okay, what you've got to remember is it's 120 pounds but for someone like yourselves who probably do it in your spare time this is going to take you months and months and months to build I mean you know I don't know if you put a couple of hours here and there as a hobby you know each week so I can just imagine I mean you could end up spending six months to a year building something like this okay so for, so as I say for 120 pounds I mean for almost a year's worth of kind of like modeling it's not bad actually uh, so definitely recommend it I hope you've kind of enjoyed and learned a bit about this kit and hopefully I've saved you a bit of money hopefully I've um, kind of I've kind of got you to go, yes, I want to get this kit, I don't want to get this kit, you know, and about all the aftermarket parts and everything. So hopefully that's been a big help. It's been an enjoyable build. You know, I hope you've enjoyed all of this and all the, um, there's a load of photos on the forum as well. So um, until next time, my name's Bobby Waldron, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.